All right, folks, welcome back to Mike and Maurice's Mind Escape. We have episode number 144 today, uh, The Dharma Junkie with uh, Justin Otto. Um, and we're going to be discussing, you know, a few different topics today. Maurice has the night off, but we're going to talk about a little bit about spirituality, a little bit about psychedelics, maybe a little bit about addiction. And uh, we're going to go through all that. Uh, check <coughs> us out at uh, mindescapepodcast.com. Uh, and check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash mindescapepodcast. For $2 a month, you'll get exclusive content. I just uploaded a new Laird Scranton uh, segment up there. Um, and also check out Justin's website. The link's down below. I believe it's dharmajunkiepodcast.com. And um, without further ado, what's going on, Justin? How are you? Oh, man, I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good. We just did this a second ago, and for some reason it cut out. But yeah, we did. I, I think I had to get to turn uh, Premiere Pro or uh, close down Premiere Pro. Man, if there's one thing I've noticed about podcasting, there's always going to be some sort of technical difficulty. Uh, yeah, at some point, it's like, a, it's an art it, in a way because you do have to have everything kind of aligned, and even then you're kind of rolling with it, right? You're well, even then you're at the not not only the whims of the equipment that could they could fail, but the the whims of of the guests that could cancel last minute and then you're like oh right i don't have anything else backed up so <laughs> i don't know what i'm gonna do and you kind of gotta scramble to put something together you know yeah the guest thing happens um it happened a little <laughs> bit more earlier on but um yeah. you just kind of roll with it i initially kind of took it if somebody like canceled or had to reschedule it'd be like oh this is you know where is do they not want to be on or something like that you know had a little uh, neurotic about it but at the same time I think you just learn like things come up things have come up for us too sometimes I'm running a little late than right. my projected time and I mean that that stuff happens yeah yeah I don't, I don't ever really look at it from like a negative aspect or like uh, you know like like any kind of a personal slight yeah. in any sense it's more just an inconvenience you know it's like oh well you know I had to schedule it and like I work full time too yeah. <clears throat> and you know I've got a lot of other projects going on besides just the the, the podcast right and uh so just, you know, time is, man, it's the only thing we can't get any more of. You know, I can make all the money in the world. I can do all the, get all the experiences in the world, but, you know, we don't get more time. So, like, scheduling is one of the things I'm super disciplined about. Um, I think that comes from having been an addict mm. and not having any kind of structure for so long that now I, I kind of, I need the structure. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't know. It just kind of, when I get out of the flow of things, it kind of, kind of interrupts my vibration sure <laughs> so, so to speak no i mean that totally makes sense um but even like i said even when you've got everything set up properly and ready to go things still oh, come up it's it's the it's murphy's uh, law man it's the equipment elves so, <laughs> yeah right um coming in from that, that other dimension before we really jump in here i do also want to point out everybody go to indrasweb.org i-n-d-r-a-s uh web.org um and sign up. You'll get an alert once the app goes live. It's an app. It's the one that we created dedicated to connecting open minds and having these kinds of discussions that we have on this podcast and similar podcasts. Um, so, so go again, sign up. You'll get an alert once it goes live and then you can create a, a profile and an account and stuff like that. So, uh, but, um, so Justin, when you got into podcasting, um, what was it you, you, were interested in, in doing having these conversations or was it more about like the topics and you had a voice you felt like you had you know you could offer or no nah, man i've more than a voice i just had questions hmm. that's why i i like uh that's why i always have a guest on my show uh i like you know uh, just formal conversation i feel like i can learn something from everyone that i meet so doing a podcast gives me the opportunity to meet a wide cross-section of people and i really just enjoy talking to people man I didn't know if I was going to be good at it. I used to play music for a living for a while, uh, like maybe like five, six years. I played nice. uh, around the Southeast doing a little uh, one-man blues band thing. That's cool. And uh, yeah, so I, I knew that I didn't have any tr trouble, you know, speaking in front of people or doing, you know, performing in any way. So I knew that wasn't really going to be an issue. It especially because I was doing it by myself anyway. Uh, so it was kind of a natural transition to podcasting. I also used to write, uh, I used to write for the local paper here and a couple different magazines and stuff. And so, uh, it's just kind of a combination of all, all of the things that I've ever really enjoyed in, uh, any kind of creative endeavors. I feel like this is like the culmination of that, you know, cause I, I, I do music on the intros and I kind of dabble with that. 
and I get to, you know, do kind of funny stuff with the intros sometimes. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, that, so that's kind of fun. And, you know, then I just get to talk to people and that, that's my favorite part is just talking to people. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, I enjoy it too. And getting to interview some of the people that you consider, you know, uh, some of your literary heroes or people that have written books or done research exactly. or stuff like that. Um, shout out to Martin Ferretti from the alchemical mind. He's, we were talking about getting cut off there before with the technical difficulties and he said maybe you guys said the pyramids were built by aliens and Zahi Was canceled your stream <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me that's actually exactly what happened no but uh, uh, well, it will be now <laughs> we did have true story when we were doing our Patreon segment with Laird Scranton he was talking about uh, we were talking about like aliens and UFOs and stuff and he was saying somebody, he was talking about somebody he, who was in the know that he was talking to. And literally all of a sudden everything cut out, which we had, did have technical difficulties earlier, but the whole thing was fine for the hour and a half that we did before that. Right. And all, all of a sudden this whole thing just shuts down. You know, it was, it was just kind of weird. It does make you think sometimes I'm not necessarily going to go as far as to say it was something like that happening, but it does make you think sometimes. Right. Right. No, uh, I, there's a, Funny story, my uh, girlfriend said she was uh, talking to a friend of hers the other day. She, they were on the phone, and uh, they started talking about simulation theory. And uh, as, soon as, like, as soon as they got to a pretty deep part of the conversation, like the phone started like digitizing, and they couldn't hear each other, and things were just, you know, it got kind of haywire for That's a minute. That's weird, yeah. Right, and it's like, wait a minute. Yeah. The timing's strange. It does, it for sure <laughs> makes you think. Um, now, what you mentioned... Um, we were talking a little bit off air, but you know, you mentioned that you had your battles with addiction. Is that, Oh yeah. Is that something that you talk about openly a lot? Oh, for it, sure. Yeah. But is that, is it something that I, my question was going to be when you talk about like psychedelics and stuff like that? Cause I mentioned we, I have some friends, we've had a friend on the show, Matt, who we did an episode mm -hmm. about addiction with where you can't ever do anything again. There's some people that just have that personality right. where even if they, were to smoke pot once or take one sip of beer or eat mushrooms once or it would set set them over the deep end but um, it seems like there's another group of people out there who have had addiction issues as well that have great success stories with it so why don't you right. give us a little bit of your background with that well uh, I wouldn't say that psychedelics uh, cured my addiction uh, if anything cured my addiction I cured my addiction and it was just by changing my thinking um, I, uh, <clears throat> I went to a holistic rehab that was uh, based on the uh, what's called the three principles. It was a series of books written by Sidney Banks. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, no. but uh, pretty cool stuff. I'll send you some links to check out. Okay. But it's just uh, mind, thought, consciousness. You know, you're not your thoughts. You know, you're you're not your mind. You're 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 nothing but consciousness. So like, anyway, it, it's kind of hard to explain. I could sit here and go on about that. It sounds kind of Eckhart Tolle. -ish. It it's kind of it is very yeah. Eckhart Tolle. Yeah, it's it's very along the same lines. Um, there's several other authors that uh, kind of you know go the same direction. Right. And it's really just it's perennial knowledge. It's nothing new. Right. It's you know almost what I mean? Buddhist it's, in nature too. It, right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I mean, it's just it you know just phrased another way. It's basically just Buddhism light. You know what I mean? There's yeah. not so much Dharma talk and things of that nature. <clears throat> but uh, so like I said, I went to this holistic rehab and that kind of really set me on a, a kind of on a spiritual path. And uh, but I, I've, I've always kind of dabbled in psychedelics throughout my uh, throughout my life. Um, and they do help with depression. I can attest to that firsthand. I've suffered depression for as long as I can remember. Um, yet again, I think that it was a thinking issue. Like I just like, uh, basically like I, I didn't know that I could be happy. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, I just didn't, I did, didn't even seem like that was an option. Like it seemed like, you know, life was just, you know, like even like the Buddhists say life is suffering, you know, and the cause of that suffering is attachment mm -hmm. and you break your attachment by, you know, following the eightfold path. So I started dabbling in Buddhism and, um, and that's really what got me, got me sober was that, mm. but, um, yeah, it was a it was an interesting uh, six years of weird hell, different types of hell. Sure. Yeah. It was. It was how, what was the experience like? How did you get into <laughs> heroin specifically, though? Was it just like? Uh, um, was there a specific 
it was it were you depressed at the time or was it uh, well like i said i mean i've you know suffered depression off and on for my entire life okay so and i was uh i had just come out of a uh, a relationship that i was in for three years it was a, a marriage okay. um there was a, a stepdaughter involved she was meant the world to me um when we split up like that was pretty devastating for me because mm-hmm. I, I can't have kids of my own okay. i had a i had cancer when i was 13 okay. and i uh, went through a bunch of chemotherapy and stuff so i i'm sterile i can't have kids but mm, blessing and a curse there sure <laughs> if, I, if i could i probably have a lot of them but not the point the <laughs> point is so when we split up uh i don't know i guess it just i, I went into this pretty dark depression and uh met this girl and she kind of you know dabbled in pills and stuff and uh you know i was like hey you know i'd like to try that you know i've i've, I've always tried everything you know i, mm-hmm. I didn't want to i was one of those people who wanted to try everything that i could because i felt like if i didn't then i couldn't have an honest conversation about it mm-hmm. have not having empirical data sure. you know what i mean yeah you know i you come across like an asshole if you're talking about something you have no experience in right <clears throat> so um started you know using pills here and there I mean, not, and not, not eating pills, but like shooting pills. And then, uh, the pills, uh, they did the big pill mill crackdown in Florida, which is where I'm at. And, uh, what happened is, uh, heroin started showing up in about 2013 and I started using heroin and, uh, slippery slope ended up uh, getting arrested in 2014. Um, this is pretty crazy. Um, uh, <clears throat> I knew this guy, right? It was uh, apparently trafficking heroin from Texas to Florida. Had no idea at the time. Mm-hmm. I just knew he had it. I was a junkie, so I was buying it from him, right? Sure. Um, undercover narcotics officers show up at my house one day. <laughs> like, they arrest me. I was charged with uh, conspiracy to traffic heroin over twenty five, uh, over twenty eight grams, but less than thirty kilograms. Mm. Which is a, uh, in, in Florida carries a, a minimum mandatory sentence of 25 years. Sure. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, That's I got nothing time. to, right. like, I got nothing to do with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a, like, yeah, I know that guy. Yeah, I bought heroin from him, but I'm a, I'm a junkie. Like, I have nothing to do with any trafficking shit. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I ended up doing like a year in jail for that. <clears throat> and in the process, I uh, lost my house, lost pretty much everything I own, got out. Uh, life was pretty dismal, so right back to heroin, mm. rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. You know, it's 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 a it's a hard thing to get out of, man. Sure. Yeah. You know, once once you're in it, it's a uh, it's difficult to claw your way back out of. You you mentioned something though that I think is a crossover into not just addiction but other types of mental health issues. So obviously, people that watch the show know I have OCD and I've dealt with that most of my adult life and. Um, you said something that was actually kind of pro- profound in the sense that it, it's like a bad thinking pattern because that's what OCD is is to me. It's not some sort of um, thing that people would imagine like your brain chemistry is just so out of whack. It's more like you right. got used to thinking a certain way and then that kind of cultivated right. its own, uh, burrowed its own way or path through your mind and that's you kind of get stuck in this like loophole, if you will. Um, now... Did you feel like that by doing so this loophole thing, do you think that that there is some sort of chemical element to it? Like, do you feel like you were some sort of some like maybe predisposed to becoming an addict? Like some people say it's like, like, I was definitely predisposed to becoming an addict Uh, back to the, the cancer thing. When I was, uh, when I was 13, like I said, I was diagnosed with cancer. Right. I was in the hospital for seven, eight months. Yeah. getting treatment and uh, on a morphine drip with Demerol injections like three or four times a day for seven, eight months. Right. Okay. So, you know, when you get slammed with that much morphine at 13, you know, such a pivotal age in your life. I, you know, like I, I didn't, you know, think anything of it at the time, but then like looking back, like no wonder I got, you know, I was so addicted. Sure. You know what I mean? Like it was yeah. like, I had already been addicted to it, like unbeknownst to me. Right. Cause at the time, you know, when you're, when you're detoxing coming out of the hospital, you feel like shit, but you feel like shit anyway. You just got done getting a bone marrow transplant for having cancer. You know what I'm saying? You're not exactly feeling great. So like the, the dope sickness doesn't even register because you're already miserable. Right. So, and at 13, how would I know what opiate withdrawal felt like? Right. That's crazy. But yeah. I think that was, I think I was definitely predisposed. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that is crazy. I, I, that's such a tough thing where obviously you, you know, you needed to come out of that. You needed those, those treatments, but at the same time, it's right. like 
that is such an influential part of, you know, uh, becoming a conscious adult from the age of like 13 to like 21 or 22. And then, you know, usually by 24, 25, they say your frontal cortex is fully developed. And, yeah. you know, that's actually when people experience mental health issues too, is like right before that kind of age, you know, the 18 to 24 to 25, somewhere around right. there. So, yeah, man, I, that's, that's a tough one. And obviously, uh, you've come out of it and you're, you're stronger and, uh, that's good. So what was the psychedelic side of this though? Did you use them to help get off of it or was it something that you used occasionally or? Um, I mean, I, I used, was in the psychedelics well before I was in the heroin. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've always been in the psychedelics for the, the, uh, consciousness aspect of it. The, uh, the reality shift aspect of it, uh-huh. the, uh, the philosophical aspects of it. Sure. Uh, like I said, I, I like questions. I have questions. I like answers. You know <laughs> what I mean? And, uh, sometimes psychedelics were able to provide those for me. I, it's just, uh, those transcendental, those, uh, mystic experiences mm-hmm. are just, I mean, you, what can you say about them? Do you think that's what it is when these people that have addiction issues or mental health, do you think it's just this look behind the veil like oh there there's more to life it's not just this shitty material realm where yeah nothing's fair i also yeah i also think that uh in like high doses like in macro doses of uh say psilocybin or dmt or even lsd in some cases um i think that they they can be so utterly terrifying yeah that they make you grateful once they're over right they make you grateful to just be here and experience this plane of reality because that one can be so mm-hmm. stultifyingly horrifying. You know what I mean? It's just, just off the charts, terrifying at times. No, for sure. I mean, it's, you're right too. I mean, there's times where I've taken in, you know, a large dose of psilocybin or something and be like, what did I do? Now I'm in for it here. And then, yeah. uh, you, you know, you get nervous kind of going up, but then when you get up there, you're like, I this is home in some ways, you know, you right. feel like there's yeah. some sort of, almost like more real than real. I know a lot of people say that. I mean, a lot of people say more real than real in terms of psychedelics, near death experiences, out of body right. experiences, you know, different, which is a weird thing to think because that's all we have is this reality, right? That we can just, you know, experience at all times during the day. But to, to experience this more real than real, we got to kind of get outside of ourselves. Yeah. And psychedelics are a good way to do that. Huh. Meditation is another way. Yeah. Um, but you know, psychedelics are a little quicker. What's your go-to with the psychedelic? Like, what's your, what do you respond best to, or what do you like the best? Uh, I mean, it depends on what my goals are. Um, like early, like early on, like when I first started taking psychedelics, it was mostly LSD. Um, then I got more into psilocybin. I definitely, I, I would say psilocybin would be my, my go-to psychedelic. Mm. Um, I don't really use them anymore. I'm seeing a meditation teacher at the, currently. And like, okay. well, one of his deals is like, no psychedelics, no, you know, right. whatever. Like while, while we're working together, like really just immerse yourself in the Dharma and, well, and it's do a it. distraction, you know? right? I mean, right. while it might be... It's, it's a bypass. It's like a necessary tool sometimes, but then other times it can be a distraction. And of course, if you're right. like searching it out or, you know, you're making that the focus, you know, the kind of right. point gets lost, right? I mean, I don't really partake much anymore, maybe a couple times a year you know, here and there, whatever, but, right. uh, it's not something I do regularly anymore. But when I was younger, yeah, it was a different story for sure. Well, yeah. you know, and when I was younger, it was more of a, you know, I, it was a recreational thing. Like I didn't know it could be anything other than that. You know, right. I was young and I was, you know, I was a dumb kid. Like you, that's most when you're, the when you, case when you're 16, right. when yeah. you're 16 and you're eating hits acid, you know, you're not thinking about, you know, and mystical and you know, right. like, but when you're, you're not trying to, you're trying to think, it's not about spirituality at that point. You're, it's about like doing something on Saturday night. Hey, let's drop some acid. Okay. <laughs> right. You know, like sounds like a good idea, I guess. I would say though, when I was younger, I did it not, it wasn't like peer pressure or like, oh, this is cool. I had honestly had this thought that there's got to be like more to life and being raised oh, in yeah. kind of like religious, you know, Catholic. I went to Catholic schools till middle school. Um, 
and I'm not really a religious person, but I felt like that there is something more to life than just just this material realm. So, yeah, I mean, 13, 14, I start to get here. You know, you start thinking about aliens yeah. and different realms and weird things, and then oh, yeah. uh, you start to experiment. But you're right. I don't think that there's this, like, you don't have this reverence for these substances, you know, when you're that age that you would, let's say, now or in your late 20s or early 30s or when you have an exactly. awakening experience where you're like, oh, the, this is this could be medicine. This could be, you know, something transcendent to help me get through some tough times. You are look, you were just looking at it as like what's cool to do on a Saturday night or, you know, whatever the case <laughs> may be. Exactly. Um, what When you get it, like you said, you, you have a teacher. And so is it like your guru, would you consider, or just somebody that you kind of follow? Um, or? Well, he's um, he kind of acts as my counselor and just my, my meditation coach, you okay. know, just my, kind of my uh, life coach slash counselor slash meditation teacher. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And he's amazing. His, uh, his name is Mikey Noshell, and he's uh, based in uh, Nashville. It's a Wild Heart Meditation Center in uh, Nashville. Okay. And, yeah, they're amazing. They've actually got this big Buddhist study series coming up pretty soon, which is going to be pretty awesome. I'm taking, going to take that and uh, then uh, further down the road, probably look into doing some sort of meditation teacher training myself. Okay. So. Yeah, meditation for me, I, I think there's obviously different types of meditation and there's different, um, you know, there's different ways to do it, number one, but then there's different versions of it that people get different things out of. You know, there's mindfulness, there's... Um, traditional there's very what i would call like visionary style uh right i mean what what are you into or like what have you done or is this obviously well there's different meditations for different things you know um there's loving kindness meditation you uh -huh. know um towards yourself towards others towards the world at large towards the universe at large there's um you know mindfulness meditation which is you know just practicing being in the here and now as ram Dass said be here now uh -huh. You know, not worrying about the past because the past is gone. Not worrying about the future because the future never happens. I mean, quite literally, all we have is right now. Right. So just, you know, being in the moment, being mindful and wise speech, wise intention, wise communication, you know, just just being here, man. Just uh, thinking before you speak. It's a big thing. Uh -huh. And uh, it's one of those things I still have problems with. Like I said, I think I'm getting a little better at it, but uh, all we can do is try. Yeah, that's a, I mean, as a podcaster, and I'm sure you feel like this too, I've, you know, when you, I don't go back and listen to our episodes unless I've listened to a couple of the ones of people that I love their books and their research. And I want to look back to see if there was anything new that I had missed from right. uh, maybe or something that I brought up that they answered that wasn't part of their stuff. But so, um, you know, once in a while, I'll listen, but for the most part, when I edit, um, some things here and there or we don't do it live and I have to edit it or something I will listen and there's things you know like ums and pauses and huhs and I used to say you know a lot like I mean if you, some of the episodes oh, man. It, it, was, it was getting <laughs> it was getting bad but you do when you yeah, listen man. to yourself it was like almost cringeworthy so um we when you're talking about like thinking before you, you speak that's most people don't so that's not something um I don't think that that's something that people even think about. Obviously they just do it. And to do podcasting, um, you also don't want to sound like an idiot. So you have to do start to think about what you are saying before you say it. And you're right. I mean, I, even I we're on episode 144. I feel like I haven't even scratched the surface. I feel like now I'm just in a normal mode where I'm not saying repeating things as much. So, I mean, it's, it's tough. It's a really tough thing to do. Right. Yeah. I, I had that issue for a while, especially the exactly what you were saying that, you know, I did that <laughs> and I noticed myself doing it and yeah. I was like, man, I got to break myself with that shit. Yeah. That's got to, this got to get old real fast, man. Right. People are going to hate that. If I, if I don't like it, they're certainly not going to like it. So I, <laughs> I've been working on that and, uh, you know, just knowing when to shut up man. like, you know, learn breaking, breaking away from crosstalk. That's a big thing. And I try to practice that in just everyday conversation. It's good practice for podcasting, I think just giving people the room to speak because most people are just waiting. They aren't even listening. They're just waiting to give their answer. You know, sure. that's my, what I've noticed for sure. Most, most people have a preloaded answer before you're even done talking. Yeah. I mean, I'm probably, I've, I can think of times where I've definitely been guilty of that myself or if I'm trying to adjust something or do something, I think that's, it's almost like a mechanism 
to keep it going in a way, but there mm-hmm. are probably people that do it mindlessly, like you're saying, like like habitually, like they're not even registering what's being said. They just are going to move on to the next thing. Right. Um, so I do think that that can be the case sometimes too. And um, yeah, that's definitely something to watch out for. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, I only notice it because I'm guilty of doing it, right. just like anything else in the world. You know, anytime I feel... I don't want to use the word judgment because it's a little harsh. I'm not going to put use the word judgment there. But anytime I, anytime I get a, a less than stellar emotion, we'll say, about something it's, or someone, it's probably because I'm guilty of doing the same thing myself and I, I feel some sort of deep shame subconsciously for it, you know? So, like, that, I think that's why I notice when people do it, you know, the, the crosstalk thing or the, the ums and the you knows because I know I'm guilty of it. Right. I, Man, I'm, I still do it. And Everybody does. I mean, let's, there, there's people that... Uh, and The other thing is, is there's people that edit their stuff, and I'm sure you know this too. They'll edit all those ums and uhs and no's so it doesn't even sound like they're saying it, but right. But then you listen to them talk live or whatever. So I think by just recording and leaving it kind of mostly as is or doing a live show, it's, right. it's you're, you're, you're learning how to talk on the go, so you don't really have that luxury. Yeah, you can't... Uh can't stammer as much you gotta really yeah. be on your toes yeah which i'm guilty of a lot i'll i'll, I'll but, 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 you know through some yeah. sentences if i if i'm stumbling through a thought i'm going to stumble through my speech you know what i mean if i haven't fully put the thought together the speech isn't gonna isn't gonna work either yeah but you know sometimes it does yeah it's it's but i think that that's if you, the fact that you're doing that and i i know look i mean we all got to be a little hard on ourselves. Right. But I think the fact that you even acknowledge those things means that you are honestly trying to learn and grow. And there are a lot of people where I listen to their podcasts and they're doing the same shit from episode one to episode 200 and it hasn't really changed at all. So uh, I think that, uh, if you keep doing what you're doing, man, you'll keep grinding by the time you're to a hundred, 200, whatever you'll be, you'll be styling. I'm hoping so, man. Um, you know, I never really expected a big response from it. It just, it was something I just wanted to do, man. It seemed like a, it would be just, I had no, you know, I had extra time on my hands and I was like, you know, I, cause I had had this, like I said, I'd had the idea to do the podcast about a year ago mm-hmm. and, uh, just never came to fruition. And I was like, you know, I've got some time. And then the pandemic thing happened mm-hmm. and I was like, well, I've definitely got time now. <laughs> so, so, uh, I just, you know, started working on it and, one day at a time and just put it together and I'm on this, you know, I think I'm on episode 15 right now or about to put out episode 15. So it's pretty, you know, it's been fun. It's, yeah. I tell everybody the same thing though. You got to keep grinding, man. Cause there's, that's it, man. there's, um, there's like a million pod for real. I think there is a million podcasts now, if I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken at the last numbers that I saw. Yeah. So, um, I thought we got into the game late three years ago and it just seems like it's even exploding at a, higher right now especially like you mentioned with the pandemic and everybody being at home i feel like there's a lot more people that have free time or want to get creative which i think could be a good thing if it's going to help you stay oh for sure sane and not freak out with all this stuff going on i think that's a good thing so um but yeah what do you see for for yourself in terms of um because like when we started our podcast we kind of had a different idea it was always going to be this like let's become let's let's do all the knowledge and enlightenment stuff and let's go down this path where we just learn and kind of figure out the mysteries of life and go through the mysteries of life like uh and then figure stuff out as we go and let the the audience kind of follow along um and then it's it's pretty much that but it has kind of shifted where our focus was a little bit more specific before now we've we didn't come in thinking that we were going to talk about psychedelics we didn't come in thinking that we were going to talk about uh as much consciousness stuff as it it was more going to be about like ancient civilizations and esoteric knowledge and that kind of stuff and from there we realized oh these things encompass all these other categories so do you have like a plan of what you're trying to do or like a, a main theme or is this just something that you just kind of go with the flow Man, I'll tell you, uh, when I first started it, uh, I was like, I'm going to do this podcast and it's going to be about addiction recovery. Like, that was my thing. Mm. That was what it was going to be about. And then uh, I did a couple episodes, like, uh, I think three episodes that were pretty pretty focused on just addiction recovery. And I was like, I can't just, I don't see this going just directly in this in this direction. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've always been into a lot of like esoteric shit, man, mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, and a lot of psychedelics, a lot of, um, occult stuff. 
And I was like, you know, I'm going to start getting some more interesting people on here. I, I'm going to have fun with this. Like if I'm doing it, I'm going to do what I want to do and talk to the people I want to talk sure. to. And so like, you know, I reached out to like, you know, people like Dick Khan and, yeah. uh, he's, he's, he was awesome. I loved him. Uh, Greg Lake, uh, you know, he did that, uh, book, uh, psychedelics and mental health, uh, uh-huh. uh, on psilocybin, which is a really good book. I recommend that to everybody. Uh, that's, he's actually been out a series. I think the next one he's doing is on a DMT. So that oh, should nice. be pretty good. Um, but you know, I mean, I just want to talk about what I want to talk about. It's like the, basically I, when I came up with the idea, it was like, you know, I do want to talk about psychedelics. I do want to talk about addiction recovery, but I also want to talk about Satanism and, you know, <laughs> and, and a whole host of other things. You know, I want to talk about whatever I want to talk about, whatever I feel like, sure. you know, whatever guest I feel like, I, you know, like I've got a, I think I've got somebody, uh, one of my next guest is going to be uh, talking about uh, ritual magic, mm-hmm. and then I've got a I do have a Satanist coming on shortly after that, and uh, talk about that. And okay, just, you know, random theology and philosophy, and and you know, like you were saying, these are all encompassing. You know, these are all. If you did a Venn diagram of these things, we're this podcast is like right in the middle. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, with the whole topic thing too like you mentioned you know why not just if you do what you're passionate about it'll come through i think and i think that that's where some people get lost they're like let's just think of a theme or let's just think of a name and then we'll that'll be the podcast we 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 aren't passionate about true crimes but we're going to do one on that because it's popular or whatever the case may be so i I think that the passion comes through when it's something that you're passionate about so if it's like absolutely you know what you just mentioned the occult and the uh um the different takes on different things. I think that that's, that's awesome. And I think that people will definitely respond to that for sure. Um, were you nervous about talking with people about these kinds of like psychedelics and stuff? Like, cause I, I even though I've taken psychedelics, it's on ton of time, ton of times, excuse me. Uh, mm-hmm. the first time we talked about them on the podcast with, I think it was, um, it was Aaron Voot maybe a little bit, or maybe it was Dick Khan. I forget, but, before that episode i got like nervous for some reason i don't know what it was but it's like doing it live talking about this topic you know i'm sure somebody i know that doesn't know that about me is gonna hear it so was that ever a thought to you or no man i'm, I'm a pretty open book um I, I i don't hesitate to tell people pretty much anything like i'll tell you exa- you know i'm not one of those people that masks my emotions i'll tell you exactly how i'm feeling and i'll mm-hmm. tell you pretty much anything about me i'm i have and that's one of the things about uh like my spiritual path that I'm following is just 100% honesty. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this podcast too, is to be accountable to myself. So if I'm going to talk about psychedelics, I'm going to do it openly. I'm going to, I'm going to do it freely because I think that the, uh, the dialogue needs to be opened about psychedelics to take the stigma away from them. For sure. With so many clinical trials going on, on MDMA, psilocybin, you know, um, you know, and, and Straussman did his studies back, you know, what, 25 years ago. With, with all these clinical trials going on, all these studies on psychedelics, look, man, you know, you've seen the the David Nutt harm index scale. Right. Like psilocybin is the safest thing you can do across the board, safer than tobacco, safer than marijuana. You know, alcohol, alcohol is the worst thing you can put in your body. Yeah. Let's be realistic. So, you know, if alcohol is available in every corner store and every grocery store and everywhere I go. Right. And that's okay. And that's the worst thing you can do for yourself and society. And these mushrooms that grow in the field are illegal. And they're the safest thing that you can do. And one of the most beneficial substances you can take as far as quote unquote drugs are concerned. And when you come down, you don't want to do anything for a while, you don't no matter do it. what it is. <laughs> Dude, you're not going to get addicted to psilocybin. Right. Nobody takes a big psilocybin dose and goes, man, I can't wait to do that again tomorrow. Yeah, most people say, I can't wait to not do that for a while, but that was awesome. Yeah. I mean, the, <laughs> the first time I, the first time I had, had a big DMT breakthrough, I was like, ah, oh, man, I am good on that for a while. <laughs> like, I don't need yeah, to do that Dick again for, was a, saying. for a hot minute. I am good. But yes, I, 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 I I openly talk about it because I do want to take the stigma away from it, you know? Yeah. And that's the big thing is like, look, man, it's 2020. It's not, you know, people are waking up all over the world and you know, it's time to start talking about this shit again. It's the, the laws have been unjust for too long and it's time to time to turn the tables over. Well, it's also, we have this ancient connection to it, right? I mean, a lot of these ancient traditions, you're talking about Buddhism and Hinduism and all these, a lot of those cultures, you know, whether it's Soma or, 
other sacraments and stuff. And even they just recently found um, evidence of uh, cannabis use and uh, Israel from like yeah. uh, around roughly, I forget what, what the, around the time of Jesus so supposedly. So um, yeah. yeah. I mean, these oh. substances have been used for thousands of years, right? Thousands and thousands of years, therapeutically, spiritually, you know, and it's just this Western culture, man. It's <laughs> the, they make you think, and mm -hmm. that's the problem. They make you think outside of the box. They make you go, Hey man, wait a minute. Maybe this, uh, this shit that we've got going on here is a little fucked up. Well, I think Maybe too the time where they were being assessed recently with like the 40s, and I'm I'm not making an excuse because I don't think there is an excuse, but like the 40s and the 50s after World mm -hmm. War II, there was a lot of paranoia. There's a lot of paranoia from, you know, oh. outside entities and different things like that. But then there's also mm -hmm. a lot of paranoia of like, um, you know, it was very puritanical in some ways, you know, so. Um, oh, it still is, it, but it, it's a lot less. I mean, the the oh, I mean, exponentially less. Right, but, right. But it's not, you know. But I mean, let's not say that it doesn't. So you look at that that, that time, and it just seemed like that kind of was. It was the worst time that those things were being investigated, or the science was look investigating. You know, those psychoactive compounds. I think that, that was the worst time for that, given the nature of what was going on in the world at the time. So, um, I mean, if you even if you look at like a lot of the early Hunter S. Thompson stuff or the electric Kool-Aid acid test, like all that kind of the counterculture, right. what was going on at those times. And Ken Kesey oh, yeah. is the first people to take these things and in, in these yeah. trials and stuff like that. So I think that it was just a, a weird time to get into that kind of stuff. But I think now it was a mistake looking back and even people you I'm sure, do you ever watch Hamilton's pharmacopoeia with, uh, Oh yeah. Yeah. So there's, he's big on not, not blaming the compound, no matter what it is. You know, he thinks all drugs should be legal, and it's it's up to the person who's using it to be responsible. I agree with that 100%. Yeah. But there's a lot of people I, that don't. There's a lot of people that think that uh, what for whatever reason you take one of these substances and you you the drug does it to you or whatever the case may be, when it's probably just mirroring some issues you already have within yourself. The people that make those statements have had no experience with those substances. Yeah, I agree. I mean brass tacks. I mean, if, if you, you know, have just a completely off base idea of what, a, you know, like LSD does, oh, it makes you, if you take seven hits, it, you're legally insane. You know, if, I think we all heard that growing up or some, something like that. Yeah. People don't know what the fuck they're talking about. No, what about, was man. it is if you took, the rumor was is if you took, uh, what was it? Three hits, you couldn't be couldn't work for the government or it was if something like that since <laughs> yeah, you're some, clinically insane it was, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah you know so you hear stuff like that growing up and you're like oh okay and then then you actually get some experience with it and you're like that was full of shit man that was everything they said was a complete fabrication right and then you know this it's illegal for a reason and it's not because it's harmful it's because it, it makes you uh dissent yeah, I don't know if it's. Do you think it's that? Because I, I question that sometimes. Sometimes I just think, like I said, it was the timing of it and like the mentality of where things were at then, and then it, people are just ignorant. Well, so the they don't CIA like. Was, but they the don't. CIA look, was distributing LSD in the sixties. Yeah, for like MK, MK Ultra, all that's. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, not even just MK Ultra, but I mean, like they were fueling the uh, the acid, like in like in the Haight Ashbury for a while until you know they started cooking it themselves. Well, I was gonna say because Osley, who's it was a, it was a big death. experiment to see if they, you know, it was a big mind control experiment that went horribly wrong. It went the exact wrong, the exact direction they didn't want it to go. It went completely opposite. It went right. the polar opposite of the way they wanted it to go. Right. Rather than being complacent and complying, they were like, hey, wait a minute. This is all bullshit, man. Right. And that's what started the whole the hippie revolution, man. Yeah, I think, though, see, I, I get torn on this because I do think that there's a level of ignorance that it, there's just systems in place. And these systems push things through, and there's not really a conscious... Maybe there is some sort of consciousness in the system being directed by energy how, of some kind. But I do think that a lot of these things are just product of systems that are just either flawed, don't get revisited, don't get fixed, or for whatever reason, they just get oh, yeah. swept under the rug, like the whole marijuana thing. Like, okay, some guys timber industry was threatened a long long time ago and we right. still have these stupid laws in place today and this thing's yeah. obviously 
you know, helpful to a lot of people out there. So, I, you know, it's just one of those things where I think it's just flawed, ignorant systems. Yeah, between uh, Hearst and uh, Anslinger, they really screwed us on that one, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's it's bottom line is Nixon was an asshole. <laughs> yeah. If we're being honest. I think anybody who's resistant to these ideas, it, it's one thing to say, um, I don't, I won't take those substances or I don't agree with them, but whatever. It's another thing to just admit that, okay, they help some people. So there's gotta be some sort of significance here. Right. I mean, look, if it helps two out of 10 people, then it shows some sort of benefit. Right. right. It's just another option. It's just, I mean, there's a lot of options out there. You know, you can get all the, the, uh, pharmaceutical anti-depression meds you want, but, you know, they might give you suicidal ideations and they might do a lot of other things, you know, all the uh, antipsychotics, all the antidepressants, all the mood stabilizer drugs, those have serious effects on your psychology and they change you and, and not in good ways. I've, you know, I mean, I've seen well, them work for people. I think it depends people. though. It, 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 I, like I, like I said, said, I know I've, people I've, it helps for sure. Yeah. Like I said, I have seen it help people, but I've also seen people deteriorate on it. I'm not sure if that's because they weren't on the right meds or the right balance of meds. But when you're, when you're fucking with somebody's brain chemistry, I mean, you're, you're fucking with somebody's brain chemistry, man. Like it can go horribly wrong. And, uh, I think, you know, like we were talking about psychedelics have been used for so long. Right. In so many capacities, why, why would they? Why would they have been used for so long if they weren't beneficial? Right. If you know. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't disagree with you. I think that if you even look at like our cannabinoid receptors, like obviously there's a reason why we have these receptors in our body. There's a reason why we have serotonin in our body. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I do. I will push back a little bit on that. I do think that. While some people push back against big whatever and this and that, I think that there there are a lot of people that that these medicines help. I'm not one of them. I oh, had my no. own issues with them because I I was resistant to a lot of the different medications that I tried. Oh but, no! But I had I I do know people that they do help, and I will say that not even not psychedelics is for everybody either, especially people that have um their pre you know they have you know a lot of family members that have had schizophrenia yeah. or they're predisposed to that. Like don't look into this, you know, talk to a doctor, don't just start taking stuff. I mean, you have to be careful too, because especially when we do these podcasts, you have a responsibility <laughs> just like, um, you know, you might have your opinion on things, but I think we do have some sort of responsibility to the way we talk about these things too, where I look at psychedelics as another option. I know some people oh, are sure. pushing it to the forefront and saying, this is the solution. No, 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 I'm, I'm no, open I'm to that. It's, uh, but let I'm the science, it's, uh, yeah, but let I'm, science get there. That, I'm just giving my opinion because I do think yeah. that, that it is a fine line to walk because I do think that there are a lot of conventional medicines and conventional therapies, whether it's CBT therapy or, you know, drug therapy, whatever it is, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, a lot of programs out there that help people. There's a lot of medicine that helps people. But I do think that there is, like we're talking about, a population of people that, are resistant against these conventional therapies and drugs. And I think that that's when it's nice to have another option on the table. Right. Well, I mean, and that's basically what I was getting to is, you know, for sure there's a lot of medications, you know, pharma, actual pharmaceutical medications that, that do benefit people. And I'm not, you know, disqualifying them at all. If, if they work for you, they work for you. But, you know, as you were saying, it would be nice if we had the option. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's my driving point. And that's, why I talk about psychedelics is because they need to be an option. Sure. You know, they, they're absolutely not harmful if you're, you know, if they're taken in a therapeutic setting, you know, with a certified professional mm -hmm. guiding you through the experience, there's absolutely no harm involved. You know, the LD 50 rate on psychedelics is so high. There's no chance of death. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's just too many benefits to, to turn a blind eye to, but I, you know, I'm I'm in agreement with you. I'm not I'm not discounting pharmaceuticals. It would be nice to have some other options available though that were not weren't stigmatized, you know, 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm not I'm not again 50 years ago. I'm I'm always going to say what I feel about it and what I feel about it is they mm -hmm. can be helpful to people, especially people Absolutely. that are resistant to traditional therapies, but at the same time, um I think that there are people that just respond to these other things as well, whether it's placebo effect or whatever the case may be that's going on. I don't, I don't know what the mechanism for, 
everybody's, you know, uh, issues or, or fixing the issue is. But I can tell you that it's it's just nice whether it's meditation, you know, psychedelic retreats or um, right. whatever the case may be. You want as many options on the table because there are people that are going through these, this, you know, mental illness is obviously an issue. We haven't gotten that figured out at all. Um, as you can see out in the world right now, I mean, there's a lot of people struggling. What do you, uh, what do you think is the, uh, if you had to speculate on a root cause for the, the amount of mental illness in, in the West, what would you say it was? Would you say it's Western culture itself? No, I think it's evolutionary. Really? I think we are at a point where we are at, uh, um, a transitional point, and I think in our evolution where you used to, your fight or flight used to be channeled correctly, meaning there would be a bear behind you or there would be, right. um, you know, a hurricane coming that you have to flee from or whatever the case may be. There was right. real flight or flight, and right now we don't have that. We live in, for the most part, nice right. and safe homes, and, um, you know, I, I think that there is a way to figure out what's going on. And I think too much time and space to think is allowing us to like, think about stupid things, not necessarily stupid to people out there, but stupid in the sense that there are things that we shouldn't be thinking about. There's things that we shouldn't be worrying about, but we do it and we do it, um, you know, compulsively. And that's what leads to a lot of these issues, whether it's addiction or compulsive thinking or anxiety or OCD or whatever the case may be. I think it's all right. coming from the same place, which is we're not, we have this part of, of our, body chemistry the the fight or flight that isn't being um isn't being used properly anymore because there is really no you know it's it's in some sort of transitional mode i don't know again i'm not an evolutionary biologist i don't know exactly but that's just my sense from like reading books like homo sapien and learning right. about a lot about like well, our history and stuff like that no and you know that's uh that's one of the big things about uh, mindfulness and mindfulness meditations and things of that nature and just living a, a mindful life is at least in my understanding depression is caused by regret of the past right but the past you can't change the past is gone it doesn't exist any for any longer so there's really no point in worrying about the past because there's absolutely nothing you can do about it no matter what you did it happened no matter what they did it happened right it's it's over it's 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 fine it's over you know i don't care how horrible it was um you know whatever the experience was it doesn't matter how terrible it was. It's done. You can continue to let it affect you. You can let it define you or you can choose not to. I mean, it's really, it, it, it might sound crass, but it's, it, it's really that simple. Anxiety stems from worry about the future, things that you can't control. Mm -hmm. it, it's just fear of the unknown, which is natural. People fear what they don't understand. People fear the unknown. Mm -hmm. So of course there's a natural anxiety because people, especially with this whole thing going on right now, there's a lot of uncertainty. So anxiety is at, at an all-time high, I think. Oh, for sure. Because of the uncertainty of it. You know, it's like being in jail. You don't know when you're getting out. Mm. You know, certain places are open up, but uh, other places aren't. And, you know, I feel for those people. Yeah. Because, uh, man, it's been going on for, what, six months now? Almost? Five yeah. months? Yeah. I mean, but there's but, a history uh, of that happening on the earth, too. I mean, you go to ancient oh, yeah. times and people going in underground arcs, you know, uh yeah the old story of uh, Yima from Zoroastrianism and going underground. And then you also have, um, you know, the great deluge stories and the Epic of Gilgamesh and all these different, right. so there's, there's, there's been adversity. Um, we've been through a lot. Lake Toba, super volcano explosion 75,000 years ago, yeah. only like 10,000 total people survived on the earth. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. What do you think it is, though? I mean, like I said, I think it has something to do with our evolution, and we're in some sort of like weird bridge phase with technology. And I don't know if that's where it's think, going think, or what. But I, you know, I think it's a. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with the, uh, yeah, with technology. I think uh, we we get too much information. Hmm. I think we are just overloaded S with, sensory with overload. input. Yeah. I think we're overloaded with input. Like when we lived in small communities and there wasn't internet and there wasn't you know, uh, worldwide news coverage, you know, when technology wasn't so advanced and things weren't, weren't quite so fast, we didn't get the, just the glut of info that we get now, mm -hmm. you know, 
And I think it's just sensory overload. You know, you when you watch the news, all you hear is hmm. all the bad shit. You know, yeah. you don't. And they'll you, leave you save the the good one for the end. It's four, like you know, four hundred thousand yeah. planes landed safely today, but you don't. You only hear about the one that crashed. You know what I mean? Like right. you got to weigh your options here. Like you know, it just is what it is, man. Like, and you can choose. You know, ultimately, it's what you allow in your life. What you, what you allow in your life is what you're going to become. So if you watch the news all the time and it's, you know, it's just fear mongering. Let's mm-hmm. be honest. That's all the news is. It's f- f- just fear based. Ah, just an onslaught of just sure. be afraid, be afraid. <laughs> and so people are like, we should be afraid. <laughs> but just turn the fucking news off, man. Right. Just turn it off. Go read a book. Go outside. Yeah. I, uh, like, I'm not, that's a, what I'm saying. The, I'm the, not the, a big mind, news the, person the, at all. Yeah. Yeah, just the mindfulness thing, man. Like, man, we don't know what's going to happen. So just live your best right now. You know what I mean? Like, you want a good future? Do your best right now. That's. I, I was thinking, I was meditating fun. the other day. I was thinking about that. I was like, what if everybody in the world just stopped caring about social media and, and whatever's going on in the news and whatever and just focused that day or that week or that month on just making their life the best that they can, the happiest that they can. I think that that would radiate out. It would be like a, it would be like doing the wave at a sporting event. I think it would just, you know, kind of be a little bit of, uh, yeah. make its rounds around the earth. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, like the whole thing, you know, people, people are attached to things. People, you know, just have all these attachments, they attachment to the, the people in their lives, attachment to the things that they, they own. And, um, as the Buddhists say, that's the cause of suffering is that attachment because then there's the, the fear of loss. Hmm. Once you have something, you can lose it. Right. If you lose something, you know, that's a, you're going to suffer. So, you know, you have to walk this fine line of like loving non-attachment, but it's, it's hard to do. It's hard to, it's hard to cultivate. It's hard to learn, but, uh, it can be done. I think, man, it, it, yeah, I would, it, it would be nice if everybody would just chill out. And just meditate for 30 minutes a day, you know, every morning and just be like, just turn the news off, turn the Facebook off, just put your phone on. Don't, you know, do not disturb for, for a week. Right. That was a, a, actually before all this happened, I was uh, signed up for a, uh, uh, 10 day Vipassana, uh, meditation retreat, like a silent retreat for 10 days. Obviously it's not happening now because of the, uh, Pandemic and everything, but I was really looking forward to that. Just to turn everything off for ten days, total silence, no speaking, ten days. But uh, we'll see what happens in the future. But who knows? Yeah, no, I know uh, we have a good friend who's been on the show before, Chris. Shout out to Chris. Um, he's all into the whole. Uh, I, he's into Vedanta, but he loves this whole, you know, path, the spiritual path, and I think that um, when you look at kind of that lifestyle there is something rewarding about it right like you're saying like kind of this ability to detach um but my question would be is that is is the detachment or not being able to lose anything is that better do you think than just because just because something that doesn't allow pain i think that there's something to be learned from pain as well though oh for sure pain is a pain is a great teacher you know uh, suffering is the best teacher I, I love my suffering. I love all the, the horrible things that have ever happened to me. I've made peace with them. At the time, they were very difficult. It was very trying times in my life, you know, between jail and cancer and divorce and just whatever, man. Right. So there's been some trying times, but uh, you grow from them. That's that's where you that's where you grow, man. You know, you you grow with when you fall into the suffering. You have to you have to be uncomfortable. That's the important thing is really settle into that uncomfortability because the uncomfortable, if you don't want to do something, if you feel uncomfortable about doing something, it's probably the exact thing you need to do just to traverse that fear. Just by taking that step, that horrendously uncomfortable step towards whatever it is, you're making such a huge leap in growth just by stepping out of your comfort zone because you have to show the one thing I've learned in life is just you have to, you have to just show up and participate. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you can't just hide in the shadows and wait for the good things to happen to you. You have to go out into the world and do good things and good things will come to you. Right. 
Yeah, I think that uh, obviously there is something about, you know, obviously karma and, you know, getting back what you put out kind of a thing. And um, the thing that I'm fascinated with is uh, it does seem, and I'm sure most people know this, but when you when you're having a great day or you feel positive or you've got like a good outlook on things, things just seem to click, you know, things feel good. Is it, you know, so I question, is it is it your mental state that dictates the world around you? Or is it the world around you kind of is attracted to you at that point? Kind of like the law of attraction, but maybe there's a different mechanism behind that than what some people might think. I think by living positively, you manifest good things to happen. Okay. I think, uh, and the, and the, one of the big things that I've learned is like to live uh, inside out and not outside in. Like really, like you can choose to be happy or unhappy, man. And I know that sounds kind of strange for some people. I know it's kind of a weird idea, but really it's ultimately a choice. You can be happy with, I, I, you know, I know people that are happy with absolutely nothing. And I know people who have all the shit in the world and they're suicidal. Right. You know, it doesn't, things don't make you happy. No, absolutely. You make yourself happy. So like people that look for that outside thing to make them happy, they're living outside in, you know what I'm saying? Right. And ultimately they're never going to be happy because they're not happy with themselves. So you have to be happy with yourself inside out right you know what i mean so ultimately yeah you create i think you create your happiness and you create the, i think you manifest the world around you you know it's people places and things man and like i said put yourself in good positions with good people and good things will happen hmm. yeah i've always been a proponent of that to who you surround yourself with and i'm not saying you know abandon a friend during a tough time or something like no, that no, no. obviously but i think that if you have a good judgment of character and you know this friend's not going to let me get in the car and do this or that friend over there is, would never do something, you know, like you were surround yourself with people you trust, people that would, you know, treat you like you're their own family or something like that. I think right. that that's the way to go because I do think that when you look at like high school days or even college days, you put yourself in positions with random people and people you don't know and you, you're really taking risks with your life in that regard yeah. uh, to a certain extent and even getting in trouble with the law. I know there's a lot of people I know mm -hmm. that were kind of straight laced, but they ended up getting in the wrong car that night or whatever and their whole life gets flips upside, you know, flipped upside down. Yeah. And it's a, it's a long road back up when that happens too. But it's, I mean, it's, it's not just people either. You know, it's it's things and ideas. Mm -hmm. Surround yourself with positive ideas and positive things. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you watch porn all the time, it's probably not going to work out very well for you. You know what I'm Unless saying? Unless it's like, really positive. Well, yeah, I mean, it's got to be like <laughs> the joking. most life affirming porn ever. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. Like, you know, you, you become what you surround yourself with. Yeah. Whether you know, it's whether it's people, whether it's uh, places, situations, substances that you get absorbed into, you know, it's whatever. Just to keep positive things in your life and positive things will happen. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. So um, is there anything else you want to get to here before we wrap it up? I think that... Uh, I think we pretty much hit all the bases, man. Yeah, we did. And I, I do think people should definitely check out your show. Um, I listened to two of them, but I'm going to definitely listen to some more of them. I know you just sure. released one, what, a few days ago or a couple days yeah. ago. Um, and, uh, so people can check out your website, uh, Dharma junkie podcast.com. I have the link down below the video. Um, is there anything else you want to plug? No, nah, that's pretty much all I got going on right now, man. Like I said, uh, just launched the website. Uh, I should have some like merch coming up pretty soon. I'm going to have some pretty neat t-shirts and stuff. Nice. So if yeah. I like your logo. Stuff, I've got a couple different ones. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to have a couple different options up there and, uh, I'm looking forward to that. It should be pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, just uh, check it out, man. If, if anyone likes it, please uh, rate and review it and share it. And I appreciate everybody for listening. I thank you for having me on, man. Yeah, for sure. If, you, if you're listening to this, and just please support him. Check out his Apple, uh, you know, his Apple iTunes. Want to leave him a nice five star review. Um, and if you haven't done it for us, leave us one as well. I, those are important. It helps. Uh, you know, push things along. And uh, I think you have a lot to say, and you've had a lot of life experiences, and. I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story and uh, we'll definitely Absolutely. have you on again in the future. And uh, cool, yeah. And so, yeah, everybody check out his website down below one more time. Uh, also subscribe to our channel, check out mind escape podcast.com, uh, patreon.com slash mind escape uh, podcast for $2 a month. You'll get exclusive content. And um, 
Also check out indrasweb.org. Please sign up. Uh, you'll get an alert once the app goes live. Um, we're just working on a few things behind the scenes. And then once it get, goes live, you will get a uh, alert and you can start going on there and uh, chatting with people and sharing things. So, uh, But listen, we appreciate your time, Justin, and uh, you have a nice night. Absolutely. You too, man. Peace. Thanks.